back and forth, went down to the wire. What does it say for you guys to have a win like this, especially when you were when they came back to the lead and it looked like every opportunity they had to take the win, you guys found a way to get back into it and take this thing all the way to two overtime so they pull it out? I mean, I feel like we've had a lot of games that prepared us for this. I mean, we lost to a team down in uh, Texas, uh, Commerce, in a kind of similar situation where, you know, it's just kind of a grinded out game and came out on the wrong side of that one. You know, we've had close games with Ewash, we've had close games with a lot of teams throughout the year and they'll just kind of prepare us and get us ready to keep going and keep climbing all the way to March. Yeah, that, that's championship boxing that you guys should, particularly you. Same time as you know, struggling in the first half, really got an overtime, as I mentioned on the broadcast. You know, once you get a new five minutes, it don't matter what you do the first 40 minutes. Talk about your whole mentality going into that first overtime. Um, Kind of just like, our team just kept telling me, uh, forget whatever happened in those 40 minutes and kind of just lock in on this next five minutes and whatever happens, happens. And like, like I said, my teammates, uh, kind of just got me out of my shell. And I know I was turning the ball over left and right and just kind of in my head all night, but my teammates got me out of the shell and I went, like I said, I went external and I was going internal and my teammates helped me. And I feel like that was just the biggest thing of, the, of overtime. Langston, you look at this big first half from you, but to, to be able to come in here and provide minutes and be able to get to the rim like you, you've been able to, what is your mindset when you get in the game, especially on the offensive end, when you know maybe Saint wasn't having the best first half and, and some of the other teammates, you picked them up there in that big first half? Uh, I would just say, I mean, just be unconscious. I mean, I kind of keep myself on that, just being aggressive, being unconscious, just being myself. If I'll be myself, then I'll be just fine. Jaron, talk a little bit about these two guys sitting next to you. And, and you guys talk about him, what he means to you guys. As a, as a team since his arrival coming off injury? He, he's been a game changer. It's that simple. He's he's everything that we need right now. I'm glad he's on our team. We're going to have it no other way. Um, like I told you guys the re the past times when I was in here, we got many Jalen Brunson on our team. So <laughs> make it says little shimmy in the middle of the middle of the floor and kind of, I mean, he can either shoot it or when guys like they're like zoned in on him, we Guys like me and Lang are great cutters at the rim, and late late game when he like he found me and it was big. Talk about the physicality. Yo, Miss work on the offensive line. I said nicely. Yeah. Talk about overcoming that challenge going forward uh, for the season. I guess kind of. I think they had 20 rebounds. I think we talked about 20 offensive rebounds going before overtime. So. We just talked about kind of just like um, zoning and just like like back to the principles, main principles, like back to practice, like rebounding drills, like simple stuff like that. We got to look, we got to make sure we look and see if our guy's crashing or not. And I know we got a little loose with that tonight. And I mean, they out-rebounded us and they, you can see that we got outplay for most of the game. And yeah, they were just more physical than us tonight. The free throws, I'm sure, were also a factor down the stretch too. You guys, you know, left a few points off the board that you probably could probably finish it off in regulation. Something that you might want to maybe coach can get on you guys about in practice. Yeah, we'll <laughs> definitely clean that up. Yeah, I think we do a lot of more, a lot more free throw drills. Well, <laughs> so yeah. we throw some hey, we got, we finally got the foul call at the end of the game on the three point. We missed the call at, U at Eastern Washington, so. Hey, refs had to make up call for us. So. Talk a little bit about that because DeJour, again, kind of didn't have his best offensive game, but had the, those big three free throws. Um, when he hit those, how was the confidence of your guys' team going into that second overtime? I don't think our confidence really ever drops. I mean, it may look like it sometimes when we miss some shots, but I, I mean, it's part of going through the entire year through the summer. Like, we all like playing each other, and that gives us even more confidence. And I don't think that confidence ever wavers between us. And I think it just kind of shows in all those moments. And kind of what I like, I've talked about like in the past, like kind of like we're a team, like at the beginning of the season, we're a team. If we didn't make shots, we we're going to fold on defense and kind of just like throughout the season and especially this game, I mean, we didn't hit shots and we didn't fold on defense and we just stepped up. And like I said all the time, ugly wins. You didn't hit a, you didn't even attempt a free throw until about seven minutes to go in regulation. Once you started 
getting to the line and make them, did you feel like momentum was flipping back to your side? Uh, I just think it, it was good for us to see the ball go through the net, us taking our time, going up to the line, knocking them down, just getting us those easy points. I just think it was good for us to get there. Yeah. I would say I don't – I feel like momentum wasn't ever on our side. Uh, kind of just – man, they was hitting some crazy shots. Uh, hats off to 10. I mean, he was maybe banked two in, I think, or three. I don't know. But A is a tough player. But kind of they were just hitting tough shots. And uh, our game plan was kind of different on the post, not, not trapping the post. And, yeah, he was just killing us down there. And, and that was basically the whole game plan. Zach's three, um, big time in the corner for you guys, put the game away for you. Um, but just his evolution um, as, you know, known as a defender the year before last, but now the complimentary offensive piece and can take big shots and, and hit him. What do you guys think about his role expanding for you guys? Uh, I think Zach has always been a shooter. He's always been able to knock down an open shot, and he showed that tonight. And I'm just glad everybody got to see how we do. And I think he just matured as a player, kind of like, I mean, like, uh, he gets those, he kind of gets those offensive uh, foul calls when he like runs through the screen or something, but he wasn't getting them tonight. And I know he missed a couple of threes. And usually like, like I said, we're, we're a team that if we don't make shots, like our shooters kind of cave in. And I mean, the past couple of nights is, even if he missed, it's just next shot, next shot, next shot. And I know the last play was even for him. He was trying to give me a post up and it just came to him and he was ready to shoot it. Talk about Raleigh Abercrombie. He's got a driver's license. <laughs> put it on the floor and create shots for one another. Talk about it. I think he's gets overlooked a lot with you guys play, but you know, me being a former coach, I know how important he is. I watch the little things that he does as well. Talk about his contribution, particularly making passing that big shot to block tonight. Yeah, he's been playing well. He started to shoot the ball a little better. He started to shoot a little bit early. Um, he, he likes that little post fade he gets too. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And you know, once once he starts knocking some shots down it kind of opens everything else for him up. And, you know, he's got a lot more tough on defense. He started to rebound the ball really well. You know, he's, he's just adding a lot more things uh, that don't just make him a shooter, make him a lot more well-rounded player and help us win. And I think one big thing on the stat sheet that I see is zero turnovers. And that's, that's a big thing for, for a wing, like especially me struggling to have five turnovers and for him not to have turnovers, that's actually big for us. Jerry, these guys talked about your ball handling, but how much fun is it you got six guys in double figures. Did your head nine? We could have had the post game in here with the whole team. How fun is it if Saint is struggling to have a legs to come off the bench or have a Dejour come off the bench and you still got more options? No, for sure. I mean, I, like I said before, I say it all the time. I feel like, but we all just have fun playing with each other. I've said it before too. We we play with emotion, um, and we all just have each other's backs. So just kind of that ability, the next man up uh, mentality. I think kind of gets us through some of these tough games and some of these games where it's a little sloppy and just a grinded out game. Yeah, but you being the quarterback, it's got to be special knowing to hand it off to whoever. It's got to no, be for sure, yeah. I mean, being having five or four other guys out there on the floor with me that can score, it helps a lot, you know. It, it opens stuff up for me to go score then because guys are worried about them. And then when they turn their heads and, you know, like Saint said earlier, these guys are great cutters. we got other guys back there that are great cutters too, and we just – we're moving well off the ball, and it makes everything easy. No, you guys work overtime tonight, but go to class tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions? All right, thanks, guys. Congratulations. Oh, 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 oh. I know these games are never easy to come by, and sometimes the nerves can overwhelm you. How do you guys handle those nerves? Do you just block it all out and just focus on the moment? Focus on the moment. I feel like we kind of, as players, grow up wanting this type of moment. So when we're here, it's just kind of, let's do it. On that, how much did the students help tonight? Because they got really off the same part of that. Yeah, uh, they're very, I would say they're a big difference, especially, you know, them being loud and making him I saw at least a little bit, yeah. Louder louder. At least helping him miss those couple free throws. You know, he's a great player, but I would say the student section helped just a little bit, you know. <laughs> just a little bit. I know just, uh, uh, just a great college basketball game. Um, obviously, uh, to, to win a game like that, it's it's funny. Like you know, there's a lot of a lot of times and a lot of situations in that game where you, you're not going to win. You know, in the last minute, you know the the math. They got these ESPN things, and it says like you know 92% you're done, right? And so it's funny though. 
Uh, on Monday, you know, when we got back from the Idaho game, the first thing we, we actually watched was not us. We watched the last minute of uh, Wyoming and Colorado State. And Colorado State being up um, oh, 05 with seven seconds left and lost. And then we watched in our league Portland State uh, against Montana State. Portland State was down 91-83 with 50 seconds to go and won. And the point being that you need to watch and learn those situations. And so for us, we talk about, you know, uh, in the overtime when DeJour got the three free throws, that was something that we, we actually work on that a lot. And, and you try to think about every situation that you might encounter in season. And to be honest, for 50 situations you work on, you're going to see two. And so for the other 48, it's a complete waste of time. But you have to be ready because those situations, it, it's, it's everything in winning and losing. So uh, I'm just really proud of the guys. I'm proud of... Uh, a million things with the guys. I'm proud of how guys that you know just struggled to play in the first half, how they responded in the second half in overtime. Um, the game was goofy. Uh, I'm proud of how we guarded Braden Parker. I know he had 26 points, but he was eight for 20 from the field, and uh, he's really good. And he's been he's been a thorn in our side for years and years and years. And and um, you know especially with Theo, who has the size to confront that, saying, look, we're going to one on one. And with you know Brock, who's not quite as big, we're going to trap that and double that. But when it got down to it, when it was a tie game or we were up two, we're not giving up that three anymore. So at that point, Brock, you have to go guard him one on one too. And uh, even when both those guys fouled out, Riley, now you get your chance. And so you just with the foul trouble and everything on both teams, I just thought it was. Uh, it was a phenomenal effort. It's a game that you know I think we'll always think about years and years from now, just because it was so intense and there were so many things to that deal. But it was uh, that was a fun night. It was a fun night. Questions? Yeah. Uh, first off, congratulations on the win. Thank you. Uh, I just wanted to know what you thought about uh, stopping IC on the boards, uh, especially on those second chances. Well, we didn't. We failed, and and that's the one thing. It's a great question. The the, the problem for us is that. And we always talk about having an edge, right? And once you start winning, to keep the edge, it, it can become a challenge. Not with these guys, we've had great practices, but going into the game, and I know nobody in here will believe me, but going into the game, we were 15th in the country in not allowing offensive rebounds. Our defensive rebound rate was 15th in the country. It's the best rebounding team we've ever had. I, it's the best rebounding team I've seen in the big sky. Why? Well, we're not huge and crazy athleticism, but our technique and our physicality Starting with Theo and Brock inside, and then Saint, such a you know phenomenal rebounder. But then our guards, you know, you look at Dejour, you look at Jaron, you look at Zach Langston. We have the pieces, but we have the technique. So we'll chart every rebound after the game. We all have different roles in our staff, and it's awful. And so if shot goes up, you got to you got to make a chart. You got to make a yes or a no for five guys on every shot. And if you can hit 80% as a team, you're really good. It's really hard to do it. We've been hovering around like 83% effort. It doesn't matter if you get the rebound, but are you doing your job? 83% of the time we're doing our job. I guarantee you tonight that thing's gonna drop down to about 52% because we just weren't doing our job and we just lost our edge and that's the wrong team to lose your edge against because they're so dang big and physical with Parker and Huey and all these guys and they're just living at the rim and, and, and they exposed us. And so that was the one thing. They shot 38% from the field. But if you take out those second shots, they probably shot like 27% from the field. Our defensive effort was phenomenal, but we didn't close the possessions. Good question. Coach, what does it say about the maturity level for this team to bounce back the way it did, especially when things were looking bleak in each session and then you guys found a way to pull it out at the end? Bleak, 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 bleak. It was bleak. Um, and I'll give them credit. You know, the way that they put that 2-2-1 press on us and didn't allow us to run our stuff down the line, it really screwed us up. I, I think I kind of failed in terms of how we're trying to execute because you can't execute. And I could have put us in a few better spots, you know, getting St. Below the defense, playing some of that middle, you know, we call it rub action, but that two game stuff with, you know, Jaron and, and, and Zure or Saint or whatever it is. We, we were a disaster. And so it did look bleak. But the funny thing is that for us, these guys have real belief and they really do. I mean, go back a week ago, Eastern Washington, they, they weren't down because, well, you know, we could have won. They were upset because, like, we feel like we're better. And, you know, you lose the buzzer. But we just have a belief and a confidence. And so being down, and I just thought, like, it was a different feel of being down. Like, we, we were struggling. We were stuck in the mud. We weren't playing good. To find a way to get that done was really good. The three free throws as well to send it to double overtime. I mean, that's got to be like a 
and getting that dissuasion pressure to like sign Amazing. Yeah. It, yeah, I mean, so de jour, and he hadn't played in a long time, right? You know, and he had, he, he's, a, he's a second leading scorer on our team. He's like seventh in the league. He's a phenomenal scorer. He struggled tonight. It happens, right? Uh, but then we put him in with about 20 seconds to go because he's so fast. We need to get a quick two. And that first, that layup you have with the left hand, that two is unbelievable. Now we got a chance. And then to hit those three free throws, I mean, woof, that was big time. And then Zach did the same thing in overtime. They bank a three in. We're up one. We got, it's, it's, here we go. And we get him to shoot a, a three that's just a tough shot, and it banks in with a minute left. We're down two. I mean, you, you want to talk about bleak. And, but the guys, the belief part of it, like, boom. I think we got the ball to Jaron, to Saint, to Zach in that right corner. He gets fouled. And you have to make three more free throws, and he hit all three of those. And so the confidence that they have internally, that's what's so cool about this thing. Coach, nobody, you won't call yourself a junkyard dog, but that, that mentality of these guys have marred in so many close games. How does that help you moving forward? Because in a special season, you got to have a special game. And a lot of us will look back a week from now. Hey, I love that term, junk, junkyard dog, man. And, you know, I mean, shoot, you know, I got Coach Reed back there. We were college teammates, and, you know, we, 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 I think we both were kind of junkyard dogs in our, you know, in our day. We'd fight each other and all kinds of weird stuff. But we have a lot of junkyard dogs on this team. We do. And it's a tough team, man. It just – it really is. You, you, don't, you don't play as bad as we played tonight, you know, in, in a lot of ways. And, again, I think they banked in three threes. There was some goofy stuff going on out there, right? And so – Usually that just means, hey, good effort, move on. And so, but you gotta have some toughness. I'm proud of St. Saint Strode in the first half, had two points, couldn't get him going, right? Um, and then with about 10 minutes left, after he had his third foul, he was unbelievable. That's what a junkyard dog is, is when you can respond, you know, and, and, uh, and just do some things. Theo was a junkyard dog, you know? I mean, shoot, you know, throw him in on defense or rock it on offense, that, that's so hard to play, right? But they're going to post up Braden Parker every single time. And Brock can handle it, we can double a little bit, but we know Theo can guard him. And so that's just, again, that's, and that's buying into your roles too. But yeah, I, I love that term, Michael, and, and I think we have a lot of those JYDs on the team. Another one, Zach Block does it defensively, oh. just his evolution from I'm telling as, a, as a defensive guy, but I mean, yeah. I guess the big three-pointer to basically ice the game for you guys. And I just love seeing his elevation I'm to telling you, man. major offensive threat for you. You know, Zach, Zach Retcher last year. So you play your first year, have a small role, play eight, 10 minutes, and you retcher your second year, right? But it was, you know, we had Matt and Dale and had two professional guards. The opportunity wasn't great. And he took that year and he ran with it, man. He prepped and he worked. And, and what he really did is build confidence in himself. And uh, for him to hit those shots, is, it's just so cool because, you know, one or two years ago, maybe those shots don't go in, but now he's not even hesitating. It's just awesome. Talking about JYD, coach, you held the 38% zone yeah. for the game. I mean, defense, I'm sure you're pleased with that. And that's what I'm saying. Like, someone's going to look and say, well, you gave up 86 points. Well, it was a 50 minute game. You know what I mean? It was a 50 minute game. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I thought we just guarded so well. And I thought we guarded that first shot so well. If we just would have done our job on offensive rebounding for them, I mean, that thing might have been a sub 30 game. But, you know, everyone knows that we're good offensively and everyone calls us out and, you know, hey, can they guard anybody? And, you know, right now we've gone from ninth or 10th in the league to defense. We're fourth right now. And so we're trending up in the right direction. We're fighting right now. So that's, but that's the prescription. You're going to have to guard to win things. Coach, it's kind of tough. I mean, watching Braden Parker for the last few years, he's, he's an unbelievable matchup against you guys. Yeah. But it's physicality. Um, they got a couple guys. I mean, Everything played 50 minutes now, 50 minutes. 50 couple, minutes. A couple of tough guys yeah. uh, in matchups there. Brayden Parker, in, in a positive way, drives me crazy. And I say that, I say that out of respect. And, and you know, Kourjohn Cooch is the best defensive big I've ever been around for us, right? And uh, going back to Brayden Parker's stories during COVID, we played him back to back here. It's back when you, okay, if Idaho State comes here, you play him twice. You don't, you don't flip it. And uh, Brayden Parker, and, and Coor would laugh about this if he's watching in Denmark, but Coor got destroyed. And it was the last two games before Christmas. Brayden Parker was the big side player of the week after he attacked Coor. That's how good he played for two straight games. And afterwards, Coor was almost in tears, and he grabbed me after the game just in that hallway over there. He's like, Coach, I promise I'll never let you down like that again. It's like, hey, I, like, I appreciate it. But that's – Brayden Parker's a disaster to guard. The difference now is he's shooting threes. Took nine threes tonight, and it's not fake. Like, he can really shoot. And so now it's like, well, you know, let's put Theo – so what do they do? They go to empty ball screens and pop it, and he's going to get the three. And so it's like, oh, he's, he's turned into a real matchup nightmare for them. And, and you know, Arrington – 
uh, just you know what what they like to do with him in terms of you know they put him on Saint they 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 think he's an elite defensive player and, and I would agree with that I think he's really good defensively, um, but he's kind of like their Zach you know he's he's tough you know it's it's not about his scoring and things like that but he's just going to grind things out so I thought we really absorbed some phenomenal performances from them to get this done.